I'm gonna make it clear to everyone because I'm gonna dedicate my life to making sure that everybody knows the truth. Believe it. You can't hide who you really are forever. Hmm. Well, that just happened. That just really happened. Hello, everyone. This is George Ray of George Reviews. And today, or tonight, we're going to be talking about Better Call Saul, mid-season finale, episode 7 of season 6 plan and execution and there is an execution all right and i have no words i don't have many words to say Uh, i do rambling words but also at the same time uh, i don't know how i want to get through this video because that was a lot but we're going to try anyways right now on this episode of george reviews talking better call saul Full spoilers, just a warning, uh, just full spoilers on this, everything that's happened up to this point in uh, Better Call Saul, so you've been warned. Howard Hamlin, what can I say? What a character, what a very misunderstood, very stern, very positive and optimistic, played by the brilliant Patrick Fabian, met his demise tonight on this episode of Better Call Saul, Plan and Execution. I think I'm in the middle of something. Uh, there's really no need to... And it's the mid-season finale, so obviously they wanted to give us something that we would have to mull over for however many weeks or over a month uh, until July 11th. So it's going to be a long wait. But let's get into it, guys. I don't know how much I really have to say. I want to say so much, but it's hard to come up with the words that will do this episode justice because this is one of the greatest episodes of television. It's only rivaled by uh, an episode earlier this season, Rock and Hard Place, the infamous Nacho episode. This episode, number seven, was written and directed by the great Thomas Snows, the evil genius Tom Snows. If you follow the Breaking Bad Insider podcast, if you follow some of the interviews, you kind of know he's somewhat of a character of himself and he always writes some of the most brutal episodes in fact uh he wrote the seventh episode of the final season of breaking bad which also featured a character's demise the episode say my name uh look it up uh you'll know what i'm talking about so it was interesting to give him another episode seven uh to to make another kind of execution if you will uh so it's kind of interesting coincidence probably but I just think it's kind of interesting. So, I don't know. I wanted to mention it. But yes, this episode was a lot. They gave us a lot. Uh, we got a 50-minute episode, which I really enjoyed. I really appreciated for the most part. Uh, I, I did love the episode. Uh, as I love every episode of Better Call Saul, I'm, bi- I'm biased, you know. Very brutal and very devastating and captivating, but also just brutally devastating. Devastatingly satisfying, I would say, because this feels right. This feels like the right direction the series needs to go. You know, we only have six episodes left, so we have to cover a lot of ground in this first half. And now we're at the halfway point of the season. And we've arrived at a point of no return. I really don't know where the series can go. I have no really predictions. You know, we are following the plan in action to take down Howard Hamlin, the wonderful character of Howard Hamlin. And we'll get to those scenes, but. Uh, let's just kind of dive into the episode let's just deconstruct it uh, if you will and just kind of see what makes it tick start with the teaser and uh, we have the resurfacing of Lalo in New Mexico and Albuquerque and he's on a discovery he's discovered the proof that he needs the laundry facility that Gus runs as a front for his plans to open up a meth lab underground meth laboratory as we know in Breaking Bad and Lalo has seen this and he knows this and Lalo with evidence 
and vengeance and vengeful and ready to strike is a very dangerous combination for this character. And I love the character of Lalo. I love Tony Dalton. I think he's amazing in the role. Even though he is scary and sinister as fuck, I still really enjoy the character. <laughs> I enjoy those kind of things. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know, but I digress. We finally get to see the D-Day plan in action. The big day for Jimmy and Kim as they have to kind of improvise a little bit to alter their plan on the fly, on the cuff. We get no stop, no holes barred, impeccable, fast, sharp pacing. It's just like jazz, you know, just keeps... And maybe that's kind of their way of executing this plan is the thinking on their feet. And it was very enthralling and very exciting. And I had such a good time with it. It brought some lighthearted, hilarious levity uh, before the twisted gut punch that we will experience. And uh, more on that later. They take the pictures. They develop them. They spray the drug. They smear it all over the photographs. And we get to reveal that the PI Howard hired was actually working with Jimmy and Kim. So, of course, this is something that was being speculated upon online, on the social medias, on the boards. As frantic and improvised as it is at the moment, it is very tight. This plan is going to go off without a hitch. And boy... Does it ever. So we go to the meeting for the Sandpiper class action lawsuit at the HHM headquarters. And it was just a really nice touch, uh, kind of seeing Howard in his uh, true full form as a lead attorney, him in action. And it was just um, in context to what happens at the end. Um, I thought it was uh, rewatching the episode as I did. Uh, it was just really nice to kind of see uh, him one last time in that role. And we get the return of Irene which was very nice, sweet old lady. And Howard's just very sweet to her. He's very good in nature. And that's the main takeaway I have from this character, that Howard Hamlin is just a good man in nature. He might not make always the best decisions. He learns from his mistakes and he takes full responsibility for himself, which is kind of rare in this universe of sociopaths and narcissists. Because uh, that's kind of what they are. No judgments, because I love all the characters of Better Call Saul. All of them, you know, Lalo, Howard, and uh, of course, who could forget Price? Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Price. Such a lovely, epic stud of a man, I, 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 for my money, many ways. And just seeing this plan come into action, you know, he gets the photographs and he inhales them. He inhales the drug that he dripped onto the photographs. I'm not really sure how that works in reality. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know. But it is a very interesting way to write it. And so hats off to Tom Snells for, uh, and the writers for coming up with this insane concoction of a plan uh, to make Howard look like a drug addict. I don't know if it really could work in reality, but... Who am I to judge? Because I just, I, I was enthralled with the whole plan. Uh, seeing the little bits and pieces building up from the past six episodes was just really brilliant. And, you know, showing them in a vague way, not expressing them in an expository way, just kind of showing us what they're doing with the plan, not telling us. There's the old rule, show, do not tell. Show, don't tell. And uh, film and in storytelling, and they did just a brilliant job with that. And we see it kind of affecting Howard immediately, and he is looking like a drug addict. And his story against Jimmy and Kim is very convoluted, you know. He embarrasses himself. It is really hilariously dark and humorous, but also very tragic in the context of what happens to Howard. It just broke my heart. Even on first watch, it just like I, I wanted to see what their plan was, but at the reality of it, it just broke my fucking heart of just seeing him humiliate himself and seeing him unravel in that way. And he becomes more disheveled and unkempt as the uh, scenes and the episode goes along. And it was just a very, very sad sight. Um, you know, and hats off to Patrick Fabian for doing such a fantastic job of playing all these different kind of forms of Howard. You know, we got paranoid Howard. We got, 
and secure Howard. And we see good natured Howard. And just all these little different forms, all these subtleties are just such a brilliant performance. I hope Patrick Fabian, as well as the whole cast, Michael Mondo, Ray Seahorn, Bob Odenkirk, Jonathan Banks, everyone should get their due at award seasons this year because they're just doing a hell of a job as usual. But even beyond what they've done in the past and past seasons, they're just really killing it. And I really hope they get some recognition because uh, I definitely see it. A lot of people on Twitter see it and uh, their performance is trending a lot. And so I just I just really hope that we get some some recognition uh, for any of them, if not all of them uh, this year. And this thing with Howard's is building up all season or all series even, you know? I mean, we've had this kind of antagonistic relationship, this love-hate relationship between Jimmy and Howard. Hey, you're a shitty lawyer, Howard, but you're a great salesman. So get out there and sell. Fuck you, Jimmy. There you go. Use that. Jimmy, I'm sorry you're in pain. <sighs> you're sorry. You're sorry. You kill my brother and you say you're sorry. Walk away. That's right, Howard. You know why I didn't take the job? Because it's too small. I don't care about it. It's nothing to me. It's a bacterium. I travel in worlds you can't even imagine. You can't conceive of what I'm capable of. I'm so far beyond you. I'm like a god in human clothing. Lightning bolt shoot from my fingertips. Howard's kind of portrayed as the villain to Jimmy, but really he's always been in his corner as much as he could be. He's always tried to do the right thing. You know, Jimmy, I never wanted it to go this way. If it had been up to me, we would have at least... Howard, I get it. Yes, he was maybe more loyal to Chuck, and Chuck really screwed over Jimmy in a lot of ways, uh, but Chuck was also a great, compelling character played by the great Michael McKeon. You see, that's your problem, Jimmy, thinking the ends justify the means. And you're forever shocked when it all blows up in your face. <laughs> Howard was trying to make it right. You know, we see this in season five. We see this as he wants them to come to HHM. He wants to make up for the past. It's simple for me. You're smart. You're scrappy. You're a go-getter. You don't wait for things to happen. You make them happen. Let me be clear. I'm not interested in yesterday. I missed an opportunity with you. And I think it's time to correct that. And that was the opportunity that Jimmy had, you know. Howard was trying to make it right. And it's just all the more tragic, you know, of everything that Jimmy does to him. How, how he retaliates by throwing bowling balls on his car. <laughs> or sending hookers to his luncheon with Cliff. Howie, you know. And doing this big plan to ruin his reputation and his career. They wanted to make it just one setback for him. We're not talking about a bar trick here. We're talking about scorched earth. We would have to hurt him, hurt him bad. To get a bunch of lawyers to run for the exits, Howard would have to have done something unforgivable. At the end of it, he might never be able to practice law again. We're talking about a career setback. A career setback for one lawyer. But it's more than a setback. This is like career ruining for him, for Howard. And it's it's just not it's not fair. I love Jimmy and Kim. I love the characters, but you know, this was just such a low. And it, it's it's the right thing for the series to do. I'm not criticizing the writers or the series for doing this because I really feel it's the right thing for the series to do. Which is to take these characters into a darker edge and push them further and further. And actions do have consequences, and as we see there are consequences to be had. And I just think it's really interesting the the arc of Howard and the arc and the kind of dynamic between him and Jimmy as this from season one onward. Their clashings and their issues and their problems. And it just is brilliantly explored throughout the whole season. And in the final scene, you know, Howard just puts it all on the table and not in an expository way, just in a way where he's presenting, he's confronting them with this, you know, he wants them to kind of know why. And it's just so brilliant done. Again, Patrick Fabian, beautiful, beautiful work. What justification makes it okay? Howard's such an asshole, maybe he deserves it. I sided with Chuck too often. 
I took away your office, put you in doc review. All of the above. Howard's daddy helped him get to the top, but you both had to struggle. Then we get to the continued cat and mouse game between Lalo and Gus. Gus trying to counterattack Lalo's attacks. And we don't really know where that's going. That's really being kept vague. I was kind of afraid that we would lose Lalo in this episode. Um, but I guess they're really uh, pacing that out a little bit more, uh, which I appreciate because I'm not ready to lose two more characters. We already lost Nacho. And of course, we lose Howard later on. And uh, even though it's by Lalo's hands, I still really want this to kind of play out in the way it's supposed to. And that's what I love about the writing and the pacing. You know, the pacing might be more slow and methodical, but it really knows what it's doing. They really take their time to organically tell this story, to create this world and these characters. And it's just, just brilliant. Better Call Saul is just fucking brilliant, you know? It's really, really cranking it up. And these last few episodes in this last season, we know where the major characters are going to be there. We know where their fates, but better call Saul. There's still characters on the table that we don't know what's going to happen to them. How, what their demise is going to be. If they're going to have a demise, we think they might, we think Kim is a goner. We think Lalo is a goner, but who knows, especially for Kim. I'm worried for Kim and Ray Seahorn was right on Twitter saying this, describing this last season is devastating. It is very devastating so far. I haven't been this devastated by a show, I don't think, ever. Even uh, as the most cruelest moments of Breaking Bad. I mean, I think this is just ranks it up to more cruel places and cruel situations. And it's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. So let's just get down to it. Let's talk more about the final scene of the episode. The final act, I guess. Just having the light flicker every time the door opens was just a brilliant uh, foreshadowing. Um, how the light doesn't really go out, but it, it's dimmed. And I thought that was a really beautiful touch. And Howard comes in and he lays into Jimmy and Kim and rightfully so. He, as much as I love the all these characters, you know, they are very flawed. Even Howard has his own flaws, but he's at least more self-aware than Jimmy and Kim because they have their eye on some kind of like golden prize at the end of the light of the tunnel, at the end of the race, at the end, you have to finish gold. And they think that end justifies the means, as Chuck says to Jimmy back in season two. I will be okay. But you? Far from it. You two. You two are soulless. Jimmy, you can't help yourself. Chuck knew it. You were born that way. But you, one of the smartest and most promising human beings I've ever known. And this is the life you choose. And he just rails again and again and again. And this is just the scene of the episode. This could be the scene of the series. You're perfect for each other. You have a piece missing. I, I, I thought you did it for the money, but now it's, it's so clear. Screw the money. You did it for fun. You get off on it. You're, you're like Leopold and Loeb, two sociopaths. All right, that's enough. Oh, you know it's true. You just have the guts to admit it. This is the consequence of their actions. You know, this is something they have to witness and go through because actions do have consequences. And I will, for my money, nobody does that better on television than Vince Gilligan and Peter Gold, uh, especially in this series and on Breaking Bad to, to another extent as well. But it's just so devastatingly satisfying and it's artistically, creatively rewarding. You know, it just feels so right. This whole sequence feels like the right thing for the series as dark and as sad as it is you know i'm just i just get choked up thinking about howard now and i'm going to be choked up watching the entire series as i do rewatch these things it's just so painfully tragic but it's beautiful and that makes it that's what makes better call saul so beautiful in my opinion but we get to another flicker of the light it goes off a little bit slower this time. It builds up. We get this close-up of Howard as he's kind of grinning, as he does. And we know who it is. We have an idea of who it is. We don't know why he's there. And just the look on Jimmy's face, Bob Odenkirk and Ray Seahorn's expressions are just phenomenal. 
and you know they're it's like they're seeing a dead man walking i guess they left their door open because he just walks in without knocking without the door opening and it was just so chilling and so frightening you know and just the way howard plays it how patrick fabian plays it you know he's really scared first he's kind of like oh you should get better lawyers than these and he becomes more and more vulnerable and he sees he's in the middle of something i think i'm in the middle of something and lalo just nonchalantly puts a silencer on his gun and executes him. No need to... Ah, God! Oh, shit! Oh, oh, shit! Oh, my God! He's... No. Oh, my God! No, no! <laughs> you know, this is kind of comparable to the episode Bad Choice Road, which is also written directed by Tom Snells from season five. You know, that scene was really drawn out with Lalo kind of asking Jimmy to say the same story to him multiple times. And, you know, there was a threat of danger, but this scene is just, it is the danger. It is the one who knocks. And it is so in Lalo's character to do that. It's really the only conclusion that could happen. Howard's caught in the middle and he's a innocent bystander, but it had to happen to kind of show that this, these actions do have consequences. That it is going to backfire and it did backfire in the most tragic way possible. And I, I just I just feel so devastated for Howard. You know, he was trying to put his life together. He was trying to keep things in order. Even though his marriage was failing, even though his career was on the slippery slope from his behavior and from losing Chuck to dealing with depression and all his struggles, Howard still had an optimistic kind of view to him. And that's what's kind of beautiful about it, but also very sad and tragic. And he didn't get to get back up on his feet as he wanted to. He inadvertently signed his own death warrant by going into Jimmy and Kim's that night. And it's just very, very, I, like I said, I, I mean, I have no words to really articulate how painful this was to witness. I know this is a TV show. I know it's just a series. It's a story, but it's very, very tragic. I've probably said that like 10,000 times in this video, but it is. I, I can't overstate it enough. And just the parallels between this and Nacho's death earlier this season. I mean, these two episodes kind of go hand in hand. They kind of, you know, equal out as some of the best shows on television. I would probably say Rock Hard Place I like just a little bit more as an episode uh, because it kind of holds that consistent tone. Not that an inconsistent tone is a bad thing per se. It's not. It's just it kind of held that it had that build up of nacho is going to die whereas this was just shocking and i mean we kind of know that lalo is capable of this and that he was going to do it but actually happening you know to howard who we've known and who we've you know shared this story with since the first episode he is a very important character he's very vital to the series he's very important to the series yeah he wasn't in every episode but he was a regular and he really brought a lot of balance to the show. To me, Howard was kind of represented a moral center. Like, he always wanted to do the right thing. Even though he was wrong at times, you know, maybe he was a little bit cruel to Kim and Jimmy. Um, but he was only being stern to them because he expected bigger things from them. And to me, that kind of out, outweighs any kind of criticisms I would have for the character. Him as a character, not the writing, just him as a person. And just the parallels between him and Nacho, you know, Nacho chose sacrifice and... Howard kind of chose to stand up for himself no matter what. And that's very honorable and that's very just beautiful all at the same time. And then they just have to end this with the most illegal, brutal cliffhanger I have ever seen. This is uh, comparable to the cliffhanger in the last season of Breaking Bad. It's his uh, right before Ozymandias. I know I'm not, I know I'm butchering that mispronunciation, but... Uh, this is probably even worse because anything can happen at this point. I mean, maybe not anything because we know the fates of Jimmy. We know the fates of Mike and they were like that. And it was just kind of sad. Mike wasn't there to back up Jimmy and Kim this time. And uh, it's just all very, very sad. I'm still in disbelief. I'm still in shock. 
and maybe doing this video is a form of therapy for me and I hope some of you get something out of it. Um, but those are my elongated thoughts on this episode. Um, I thought it was a brilliantly written directed by Thomas Snows, the evil genius Tom Snows. He really just knocked it out as he does, as he's done with lots of different characters, uh, especially with Mike and Breaking Bad. Uh, he did that big episode and uh, he's, he did a great job. But anyways, uh, what are your thoughts on this episode? What are your thoughts on Better Call Saul up to this point? Please let me know down there in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you'd be so kind. It really helps the channel out, really helps us grow. Please remember to stay calm, keep cool, keep chill, embrace great cinema. I'll see you on the next video. And I have a special Better Call Saul video coming that I hope you'll enjoy. It'll be the next video coming out, uh, hopefully this week. But until next time, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, peace out. You know, Jimmy, sometimes in our line of work, you can get so caught up in the idea of winning that you forget to listen to your heart.